Hello and welcome. My name is John Gross. I'm a bone and soft tissue pathologist at Johns Hopkins University. Here we have case number 10 from an adult. We have a uh, CT scan and the coronal view and the bone window. And here we have a destructive mass on the right pelvis. Here this mass is uh, growing both uh, laterally and medially to the iliac bone. It's growing through this bone. Uh, and out into the soft tissues. Um, but if you look very carefully, you'll, you'll see a little focus of matrix mineralization uh, that again, we can appreciate here on the bone window of this CT scan. So we have this large mass uh, that is destructive, uh, but we have a little bit of matrix mineralization here, which is a clue for us. Um, and here we have the axial uh, view. Again, we have a large destructive mass in the right pelvis that is destroying the iliac bone here. It's um, out uh, laterally and posteriorly as well as medially. Uh, but if you look very carefully, there's little foci of white matrix mineralization, which is a clue for us radiographically. Uh, tissue was obtained, and here we have this uh, low power view with these variably cystic and blood filled spaces. Some of the areas are quite solid. Uh, it's quite blue at low power, a little bit of necrosis. And higher power, these um, cyst like spaces have these uh, plasmacytoid, epithelioid, uh, osteoblasts here, kind of growing within these cystic spaces. Um, some of which are uh, certainly mitotically active. Um, areas are a little bit more solid. Here, there's a, uh, a part here where we have uh, numerous uh, mitotic activity, which was um, various areas are quite brisk. Uh, clearly, it's a malignant um, tumor. And then other areas um, have matrix mineralization here, this osteoid production. So we knew that there was matrix mineralization radiographically, but here, even though it was quite focal, uh, very, very focal indeed, um, we have matrix mineralization for an osteosarcoma. So this is a telangiectatic osteosarcoma. Uh, this specimen uh, was uh, subject to neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy or the patient underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy and it was resected. And here's a uh, nice cut section of the fresh gross specimen, which matches up with the what we saw radiographically, this big large mass, both uh, laterally and medially to the iliac bone, and it completely grows right through and destroys the iliac bone. Um, but I'll, I'll mention that uh, how bloody um, this, this uh, tumor is. So this is the telangiectatic variant of osteosarcoma, which is one of many different um, osteosarcoma variants. It's currently uh, grouped in the conventional osteosarcoma according to the WHO fifth edition uh, tumor classification. Uh, and briefly, I'd like to review the osteosarcoma variants with you. So the most common is um, of conventional osteosarcoma is osteoblastic. Here's a high power view or intermediate high power view of osteoblastic osteosarcoma on the left, with these uh, anaplastic tumor cells that are directly producing mineralized osteoid here with this uh, purple pink uh, uh, matrix uh, pattern uh, without osteoblastic rimming. And on the right is an even higher power view. You see these anaplastic cells uh, with the uh, osteoid production uh, encircling the tumor cells. And this uh, osteoid uh, is, can be uh, described as lace-like and, and fine. Um, here is a collage of various uh, osteosarcoma subtypes. At the top left, fibroblastic, which is a spindle cell sarcoma, which is relatively bland. However, there are areas that have more solid and well-formed bone formation. Again, lacking osteoblastic rimming. The top right, 
uh, is telangiectetic osteosarcoma, uh, what we are currently dealing with with our patient. Uh, Blood-filled cystic spaces, various um, areas are a little bit more solid and cystic. Again, the, the amount of osteoid production um, can be quite focal, uh, which is often why you will need to correlate with the radiographic features. The bottom left, a focus of chondroblastic osteosarcoma, and it was just surrounded by a more fibroblastic uh, uh, component of that tumor. And the bottom right, with giant cell rich osteosarcoma, these um, malignant um, cells producing mineralized osteoid and scattered abundant um, osteoclast like giant cells. Small cell osteosarcoma uh, is shown here in this photomicrograph uh, at intermediate to relatively low power on the left. These uh, primitive cells that are uh, directly producing um, this purple mineralized osteoid. And on the right, you can see this uh, mineralized osteoid, how fine and lace-like it is uh, in this small cell osteosarcoma variant. And similar to telangiectetic osteosarcoma, small cell osteosarcoma is now considered as a part of conventional high-grade osteosarcoma. And then uh, the final case that, or variant that we'll discuss today is chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma, which is another very, very rare variant. Uh, on the left, you can see all the matrix mineralization uh, in an otherwise fairly pink tumor. Um, and on the right, we have what uh, uh, truly resembles a chondroblastoma with even the reniform um, cells, and some of them may have nuclear groups. However, we have mitotic activity uh, and matrix mineralization and a tumor that is um, much more aggressive than what would, uh, you would expect or allow in a chondroblastoma. Um, and of course, this is uh, a much worse prognosis um, than the benign chondroblastoma. This is a chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma. So osteosarcoma is the most common non-hematopoietic primary bone tumor with a bimodal age distribution, in patients younger than 20 and uh, greater than 60 years of age, generally occurs in the metaphysis of long bones, often around the knee, but can affect any bone. Radiographically, osteosarcoma is generally an ill-defined tumor with a mixed lytic and blastic radiodensities seen. Osteosarcoma may be associated with a Codman's triangle, which is when the periosteum is elevated or lifted by an advancing tumor front. Osteosarcomas grow rapidly, which is um, in contrast to conventional chondrosarcomas, which are generally more indolent and slower growing. Osteosarcoma is defined by the production of malignant osteoid. As we've discussed, it's often lace-like and it lacks osteoblastic rimming. Osteosarcomas are often invasive and have permeative growth pattern. Um, most cases of osteosarcoma will uh, need to have um, neoadjuvant or preoperative chemotherapy. There are a couple of subtypes that that is not recommended and we'll discuss those in later videos. The lung is the most common site of metastatic disease. The prognosis of osteosarcoma is variable. Uh, conventional osteosarcomas with 50 to 80% overall survival. However, some of the low grade osteosarcoma variants um, will have uh, relatively good uh, prognoses with greater than 90% overall survival. So in our patient here, um, we had a telangiectetic osteosarcoma, which is uh, again, grouped as a, uh, currently as a conventional osteosarcoma category. Um, it's a, uh, a high-grade um, osteosarcoma variant. Um, will often show these blood-filled or empty cystic faces some cystic spaces, which may resemble an androsal bone cyst. And there may even be fluid fluid levels uh, on radiographs. Um, uh, telangiectetic osteosarcoma, since it's a high-grade osteosarcoma, will have pleomorphic cells with nuclear hyperchromasia. You'll have uh, often um, see atypical mitoses. Um, osteoid formation is generally focal, and it may be absent on a biopsy, which is again, um, highlights the importance of radiographic correlation. Uh, and uh, because this is a high-grade tumor, we'll often have permutative growth. Thank you.